Hey there, internet family. My name is Bradson Henry, and welcome back to another episode of creating a multiplayer game server using Unity 3D and Red Hat OpenShift. I'm really excited to have you guys here today because today, like I said, we're getting into the nitty gritty of the code of creating our multiplayer game server. So in this episode, we're gonna build the framework or the skeleton of our multiplayer game server, and we're gonna really get into what really makes our server work. In our previous episode, we got a chance to look at some of the capabilities of WebSocket and today we're going to start coding some of those functionalities into our multiplayer game server. So if this is your first time checking out those series, welcome, welcome. I'm excited to have you here. But I really encourage you to go back and check out some of the episodes that I've done before. I'm going to go ahead and post a link above here so you can get a chance to check out the playlist and get familiar with some of the concepts of a multiplayer game server so you have the best opportunity to make the most of today's video. So without further ado, let's get into the code. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and set up a new folder for our project. We're going to call our folder multiplayer oops, game server. This is going to be what we're going to be using for our whole project. We're going to manage all our files, how we're going to manage our multiplayer game server. So this folder is going to be important. So I'm going to go ahead and move it over here and I'm going to open it. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to open up a new terminal window. I'm going to open a new terminal window. And I'm gonna go ahead and clean it by pressing Command L or on, um, I guess, the Windows machine, it might be uh, Control L. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually navigate into our folder in the terminal window. So I'm gonna go CD, change directory, and I'm gonna click and drag my folder from my desktop into my command line. It makes it a lot easier so I don't have to do any typing. And I'm gonna press Enter. Now we're in our folder. As you can see, we're in the multiplayer game server folder. What we're gonna go ahead and do is initialize our node server project by using the npm init command. So I'm gonna type in here npm init and I'm gonna press Enter. As you can see, it's gonna start a dialog. If you're familiar with Node, then you're familiar with this dialog and you know what this takes, but essentially it just asks you simple questions about your project, some things that'll be used for uh, essentially the uh, configuration of the project and uh, you know setting up everything. So I'm just gonna go ahead and accept all the defaults. The only thing that really matters for me as I skip through this is that the entry point is set to server.js. And I'm gonna press Enter and I'm gonna press enter. And I'm just gonna keep doing that. Author, I'm gonna put myself, because you know, I'm writing this, I'm not Braston Author, Braston Henry, and, and I'm gonna go through. And now, as you can see, it's confirming, this is what you wanna call it. This is all being created in our package JSON file, which basically manages everything about our project. So I'm gonna go ahead and say yes by pressing enter and you can see in our folder package JSON has appeared. So now that we have our package JSON and everything is good to go, what we're gonna do is gonna go ahead and create our server file. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna type in here touch server.js um, and touch server.js, what it does is it creates a file named server.h. That's what the touch command does. From here, I'm just gonna open up our server.js file. Looks like it came off screen, so I'm gonna pull it here and you'll see I have a blank file. I'm using a sublime text as my text editor and I'm gonna begin starting out typing out code. So the first thing we need to do in our node code is go ahead and import in the packages of the frameworks that are gonna be important for our base code. So in this case, we're gonna be using two different frameworks. We're gonna be using UUID random, which is used for randomizing a user identification. We'll be using that for identifying our users in our game server. And we'll be, of course, bringing in WebSocket since WebSocket runs everything. So first we'll start with WebSocket. So I'm gonna go const WebSocket equals require WS. Now I'm going to include in our random UUID uh, generator. So I'm gonna call it UUID equals require, oops, look at that, it gave me a hint, so I'm gonna save myself some time, and I'm gonna call it UUID dash random. So now we have imported both of the files that we're going to need, or I guess the package that we're gonna need, and I'm gonna go ahead and save this. Though we've written in here the imports, we need to actually install these packages, install these frameworks in our node um, application. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna switch back over to our command line. And in here, we're gonna do a simple command, which is to install these packages, and we're gonna install them by their name. So we're gonna go npm install wsuuid-random. 
So once again, there's spaces in between all those words, npm space, install space, ws space, uuid random. Press enter. And what's going to happen is we're going to see that the code is getting installed, the packages, the frameworks are getting installed. So now when we run our server, we won't have any issues. If we try to run it, it would crash otherwise. All right, now that we've installed our um, packages, we need to get ready to set up our WebSocket server because this is what's gonna be running everything. The base of everything is gonna be based on WebSocket. So let's go ahead and create a constant variable that will be used for creating our WebSocket server. So we're gonna go const and we're gonna go WSSS for WSS for WebSocket server and we're gonna type in new WebSocket dot WebSocket server. It's gonna take in two different parameters. We're gonna take in, I guess you could say a JSON that has some configuration about our, our server. So the first we're just gonna, the only thing we're gonna put here is our port. And in this case, we're gonna do 8080. The reason we're gonna wanna put in port 8080 is because when we deploy into the Red Hat OpenShift environment, it's going to by default be exposed at the 8080 port. And if we don't have that lined up with what Red Hat OpenShift is expecting, we can have some issues. So just make sure you make it at port 8080. From here, we're gonna go ahead and just put in a, a, a closure or a small function that's going to just tell us that our server has started appropriately, meaning that you know everything was configured correctly and that we are good to go. So I'm just gonna type in our server started. Oops, I'm gonna type our server started, if I can spell correctly. All right, now that we have that set up, we have our WSS variable, our const, and that const will basically be what we use to configure um, and run our server. So before we go ahead and create our WebSocket server functions that we'll be needing, the ones that I mentioned in the last video, I wanna go ahead and add a, a variable that'll be really e useful for us in the future as we're creating our WebSocket server. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a variable called players data. So what this will do is track all of the information about our players who are connected to our server. Now, WebSocket by default will control this. You can see how many users or how many clients are connected to your server. But if we wanna have some custom functionality for how we manage our players in our server, we're gonna to need to create our own object or something to manage that. So one thing I'm gonna do, and this is just a convenience thing, for later because it just helps it e makes it easier for me to identify what what this data is later down the road is I'm gonna type in here pl type player data this won't really be relevant at this moment I'll explain a little bit later when we're starting to pass information from server to client why I'm putting this in here it's really just more a thing to help when I pass the data to the client to know what type of data is being sent so it can parse it appropriately in our client all right, now that we have our player data set up and we have the basic setup for our WebSocket server, it's time for us to add some of the base or the most needed functions within our WebSocket server. So the first function we're gonna add or the first method we're gonna add is the onConnection method. So what we're gonna type in here is wss.on, which is on is basically the generic function for all of the listener type functions. So on, and it's gonna be a function and we're gonna type in here in our first parameter connection. So this is the on connection function. As I mentioned in the last video, the naming convention is gonna be similar, but the syntax for how every language does it is gonna be a little bit different. So this is syntax for doing on functions or listener functions. And then we're gonna go ahead and type comma, and our next parameter is going to be a function. It's similar to how we did our WebSocket server a little bit earlier. We were taking in a closure or a function that's gonna run in our on connection function. So once again, as I mentioned in our last video, onConnection manages the persistent connection between our client and our server. So within our onConnection function, we're going to have a lot of different methods and listeners that will be used for managing our connection. So let's make a base simple function that we'll be using within our onConnection function. So I'm going to type here function and I'm going to say call it connection and then we'll call it clients. And from here, I'm going to have open brackets. So from here, this is our on connection function. We'll come in here later, we're gonna be adding some more code, but for now, we're just gonna leave it blank. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna put in our on listening uh, function. This basically sets up our server to listen and is gonna be useful for us as we're you know setting up our server, our node server, it needs to listen at a particular port. And we've already set up the port, but this just kind of sets up that. So I'm gonna do wwss dot on, and we're gonna type in here listening. And we're not gonna really do much here. We're gonna do another uh, closure, another kind of empty function here. And all we're gonna do is we're gonna console log 
that we have started our server and it's listening at on 8080. This is more or less a sanity debug to let us make sure we know when we look at our you know, debug logs or anything like that, that our server is actually running and listening on port 8080. Now we have the basic setup of our server. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna add in some functionality inside of our on connection function. Once again, on connection manages our connection between our client and our server. And we need to add some additional functionality for managing messaging, for managing how we manage closing connections, and also just setting up some things between our client and our server. Now let's go ahead and fill out the code that we're gonna need in our on connection function. So the big thing to note here is that our on connection, once again, manages manages our connection, and it also manages the handshake between our client and ourselves, which would be our server. So the first thing that we're gonna to wanna to do is go ahead and set up an identity for any client that connects to our server. So for our first line of code, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and create a unique identifier for the client that has connected to our server. So what we're gonna type here is client.id is equal to UUID open and close parentheses. As I mentioned earlier, all this does is create a randomized user identification and we're gonna assign it to our client on the field ID. We'll be using this client.id value to identify our client from all other clients on our server as we move forward. Now that we've created a unique identifier for our client, let's go ahead and add that client to our players data dictionary. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna type players data and we're gonna do open bracket, close bracket. Within this open bracket, close bracket, what we're gonna do is we're gonna type in here, open and close quotes plus client.id is equal to open squiggly brackets id colon client.id. So what's happening here? Essentially what we're doing is we're adding some information about our client that's connected to our server to our player's data dictionary. So the reason why we're gonna to wanna to do this now is because later down the road when we have custom information or custom data that we wanna have associated to our client, we're gonna to wanna to store that information within our player's data dictionary for any type of use that we might wanna use in the future. So now that we have our client associated to our player's data dictionary, let's let our client know that we've given an ID for it to be identified with. So what we're gonna do is send a message to our client with its client ID. So what we're gonna type here is clients.send open close parentheses. What we're gonna do now is send a JSON string with our client ID information in it to our client. So let's type in here our JSON string. So we're gonna use the angled apostrophe. We're gonna type squiggly bracket, open quotes, ID, close quotes, colon, space, open quotes, and then here we're gonna put dollar sign, open squiggly, close squiggly, client.id, and after our close squiggly, close quotes. So it's important that we go ahead and structure our JSON string correctly so our client can appropriately parse it when it receives it. All right, now that we've sent the data that we need to to our client, it's time for us to set up our on message and our on close functions. So what we're gonna do here is type clients.on, open parentheses, single quote, message, then comma, and then we're gonna type in here open quotes data, then we're gonna do an arrow, so equals, greater than sign, squiggly brackets, and just press enter. So what we're doing is we're identifying that we're doing our on message listener and our on message function is gonna receive data from our client and then we're gonna do something with that data. So in our case, our data is gonna be a JSON string. So what we're gonna to wanna to do is parse our JSON string so it's a little bit easier to use when we have it on our server. So what we're gonna type here is var data JSON equals json.parse, open parentheses, close parentheses, data. Once again, all this does is parse our JSON string and make it into a JSON object so we can more easily use it on our server as we see fit. All right, now what I'm gonna do is just add some simple console logs so that when we do receive a message, we can actually see it print out in our server terminal window. So I'm gonna type here console.log and I'm just gonna simply say player message. Let me correct that E. And then below that, I'm gonna say console dot log data json and just like that our server is set up to receive messages from our client parse that data and then we'll be able to see it in our terminal window just for a sanity check 
All right, so let's finally set up our on closed listener function so that we can know when a client has disconnected from our server and do the appropriate actions to clean up that closed connection. So let's go down here and type client dot on open parentheses, single quotes, close, comma, open and close parentheses, our arrow, squiggly bracket. So as you can see, we have our on close listener and it doesn't take in any parameters. It just simply receives the message and then we can do what we'd like to with it. In our case, for simplicity, we're just gonna log that a client disconnected and which client that was. So let's type console.log open parentheses, open quotes, this connection closed. And then under that console.log open parentheses, open quotes, removing client. Then we're going to go ahead and add a plus here and type client.id. Once again, all this does is let us know when a client has decided to close this connection and allows us to act appropriately. And just like that, we have the beginnings of our multiplayer game server. So this is just the beginning of what we're gonna be doing in this series. There's a lot more for us to do, a lot more for us to learn, and a lot more capabilities for us to add into our multiplayer game server. And I really hope that you'll stick around to see a lot of that come to fruition because I think there's a lot that we can learn along the way. In our next episode, I'm excited because for those of you who are not familiar with the whole world of game development, I'm gonna be introducing you to the idea of Unity 3D. In the next episode, we're gonna actually be tackling creating our game application. It's gonna be a very simple application that any can use but I'm excited because I'm going to be sharing a little bit about unity 3d and some of the things and some of the power that it offers so I encourage you to stick around there's a lot more to learn a lot more episodes to come thank you so much for checking out this episode of creating a multiplayer game server using unity 3d and Red Hat OpenShift and I look forward to seeing you guys in the next episode y'all take it easy and until next time peace